Hello and welcome to Jazz Tonight. I'm Michael Jacoby, executive producer of Jazz on the Plaz and host of Raising the Standards on KSCO Radio in Santa Cruz. Delighted to have you with us. This marks, uh, well, we're just beyond the halfway point of our uh, summer homage to the great Ella Fitzgerald. Joining me, and I couldn't be happier, our resident artist, Paula West. Hi, Hi. Paula. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. You know, every time you and I have this discussion, whenever I say we've known each other 25 years, you always poo-poo it and go, no, it hasn't been that long. I think it has been that long. It has, because uh -huh. I have to tell you, I was listening to an old show uh, of mine on KRML, and Craig Maxwell was on. For a, belly, a buddy of ours mm -hmm. from 2003, and we mm -hmm. were talking mm -hmm. about our good friend Paula West, and that is near as if I carry the five. That was 25 years ago. Yes, yeah. but some people were pushing, pushing the years <laughs> up uh, because I remember when I moved, you know, to yeah. the Bay Area and everything. So you came to Bay Area in '89. I actually came in November of '88. '88. Yeah. From where? San Diego. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting because uh, you were up here earlier in the season. You were so nice and it got such a re remarkable response. You did a little duet with Sasha Boutros and her uh, headquarters is San Diego. Yes. Did you know her down there? Uh, no. Well, no, because we uh, met on Facebook okay. and I go to San Diego once or twice a year and I said, hey, I'm coming down there. Well, let's get together for a drink. Or I'd never met her before, yeah. but just exchanges on Facebook. But I've done that different, you know, I'll go somewhere and yeah. say, who, who's in town? Yeah. And it's, a, it's a lovely way to meet people. It is. And it was so Find fun. out if you really want to be their friend or That's not. That's right. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah. I have a rule about Facebook. You have to walk upright and have saliva. So, so <laughs> I don't really test people yeah. out. Um, but it was fun because she got you up uh, and you guys did Fly Me to the Moon together and uh, that, was, that was really a joy. Crowd just loved it. So you are back and uh, as I mentioned, you are our residence artist. So people have been able to enjoy you for the last couple of years and will continue to. Uh, this year's theme, Ella. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your memories and thoughts of Ella Fitzgerald. Well, when I started dabbling in the music, she was definitely someone mm -hmm. I uh, wanted to learn a lot from, uh, and particularly from the songbooks, because, you know, the Cole Porter and Harold Arland and all of the different songbooks that she did. She's a great person if you want to learn the melody of the song. I say her and... Uh, uh, Peggy Lee and probably Frank Sinatra, yeah. they, they sang the melody, so you wanted to mm -hmm. hear the song straight. That's who I uh, went to. But she was just so varied in yeah. many different ways. Well, people often ask me, if, you know, if I'm going to start a jazz collection of albums or CDs, one of the ones I always say is the compilation on Verve mm -hmm. of hers, uh, and there must be eight or ten CDs in it from Cole Porter, Irving Berlin, Rogers and Hart. Duke Ellington. Um, Duke Ellington, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. She was, um, I saw her several times. I saw her with Torme once at the Fairmont. Wow. Um, and that was a cute story because he was doing a little scat tribute to her. And he said, oh, let's bring her out. Ooh. And she was sitting there and says, let's have her get up. Um, and it was remarkable. But the other, and I saw her at the Circle Star. And, and I don't know if you remember, but late in his career, Sammy Davis would bring people with him out. And I, they, he brought Carmen McRae, he brought Sarah, uh, and he brought Ella to open for him at Circus Star, which was really quite extraordinary. I never got to see yeah. him. I yeah. wish I... Did you ever see her? I did. I saw her once, and it was like the, during the first year I moved to San Francisco at the Masonic Auditorium with Oscar Peterson. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that was that's, great. That's pretty special. Yeah, talk. Uh, we've talked a little bit about growing up in San Diego. Um, at, at what point did you? Was there a lot of music in the household? There was music up? in the household, but it really wasn't jazz, okay. to be honest. But yeah. there were, you know, my my dad liked to listen to classical music. He loved Ray Charles. Yeah. He loved the whole Motown yeah. thing. But I, we all grew up playing instruments, so that you know, exposes you to uh, different things. I grew up playing the clarinet, was in marching band and all of that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah. but I think Now, was exposure. that the deal with the family? You're going to learn an instrument and then you could choose it? 
or how did you end up with the clarinet? I don't know. I think a lot of people end up with the clarinet <laughs> because, you know, it's, you could carry it around. It's economical compared yeah. to other instruments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, all the public schools back mm -hmm. then had and it was, uh, band programs. it was a programs. much better world when they did, I'll tell you They that. had band programs. So you were, it was mandatory to either... When, when you talk about the marching band, I'm always reminded of the scene in uh, Woody Allen's Take the Money and Run when he played the cello in a marching band <laughs> <laughs> to keep moving the chair. When he actually played the clarinet. As, as they marched. Yeah. Uh, but this is high school, I take it? Uh, or elementary school? Oh, I started school? in elementary school. Okay. I started in fourth grade. And you just stayed with the clarinet all that time? Stayed with the clarinet. Do you still play? No, I have it though, but I, I no, I, I quit because it wasn't cool anymore to yeah. be in band at a certain point, you know, so I quit how many at times 11th can you play grade. Stranger on the Shore? I'm not doing it. Never anymore. did. <laughs> Never did that, but yeah. It, but I, you know what? I wish I still played though. Yeah. I've never known anyone who's regretted yeah. quitting. Yeah. You know? Really? Yeah, most people, like their parents push them or something. Yeah. I, everybody's happy that they're, they had some mentor yeah. or somebody push. I've never met anybody who, uh, you know, regret it. Regrets it having played your right. yeah. yeah. Well, it, it, it's interesting how many, and obviously this is, we've done so many of these shows, and how many vocalists, uh, that their folks were in the classical music, and which I guess is, is great roots for, for a, a musical education. Yes, and even if you don't end up, you, you quit or whatever, Everybody can't play yeah. or perform, but you got to have an audience too, and that's yeah. where the appreciation starts. Yeah. What um, and when you, when did you put the clarinet down and open your mouth to to sing? Well, there was quite a distance in time because uh, I quit playing in the eleventh grade, and I had played since fourth grade. I mean, and were you pretty good? Yes, yeah. I was actually. I was in the. Uh, the uh, junior high all city honor band cool. and everything, yeah. And in marching band, I was always usually the first chair. Okay. Uh, but and I didn't start singing because I was never in choir or anything like that until I um, mid to late twenties. Really? That's when I started just dabbling. I just started. I thought like, oh, maybe it, maybe I can sing once a year or something. Mm -hmm. You know, or, yeah. you know, just do it, you know, have friends and family coming in. It and, came to be a passion. And now when, when your dad was listening to classical in Motown, at what point were you in your 20s when you kind mm -hmm. of turned, yeah. gravitated toward jazz? Yeah, gravitated toward the standards. Ella yeah. being a okay. wonderful person to look up to. Yeah. And just started, I started buying records. I'd go to those old record yeah. stores and sometimes it was just the cover of it I yeah. liked or, you know, and just started buying all, a bunch of vocal yeah. CDs. The first recording that really stuck with you that you remember growing up? As far as jazz? Yeah. Um, or as far as a singer? No. I've always... Uh, <sighs> I don't know about the first recording. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard Billie Holiday. It mm -hmm. was it was essentially an epiphany because it was so different to me. Yeah. Than, than, than I, you know, I was I was used to Ella and Nancy Wilson and uh, and uh, Nito Day, but but she was a, a whole other world. See, I didn't listen to Billie Holiday until like Lady Sing the Blues came out, of course, oh, which so. has nothing to do with right. Billie Holiday. Yeah. But I was like, no, yeah. that's a, you know, I I wanted to if pick you, up yeah. some Billie if Holiday you think after Ross that. Diana can sing. Listen to Billie Holiday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so your early twenties, uh, mid twenties, you're starting to sing. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty much a, a hop, skip, and a career change to say. Well, maybe I better do this. I didn't stage. really have a career though. Yeah. I was waiting. That's tables, my. But so my point like, is, you're yeah. singing, but that yeah. at some point you got to find an audience. Yes, and you know what? A Were lot you shy? Of, I found. Oh yeah, okay. I would just like cling to the piano. <laughs> I would just like not even you know and not say anything. <laughs> no choreography. <laughs> oh, I had no patter. I had you know. Yeah. I was just yeah. trying to get the words out. 
And so, uh, that, did you do a ton of the little things? Because I did stand-up comedy and did the whole thing with mm -hmm. the little clubs and stuff mm -hmm. where you just have to... Why aren't you still doing stand-up? I, like be I liked eating better than performing. That's okay. why I couldn't make any money. On. But, but you did the, uh, the little club circuit. Well, you do... You know, like you go to jam sessions yeah. where they used to have them. I don't know if they still really yeah. have them anymore, but yeah. they had, you know, and particularly when I moved up to San Francisco, in, when North Beach was still inundated with a lot of jazz clubs mm -hmm. and stuff, and, you know, it would be a Monday night or a Sunday night and, or whatever, you know, and then you, you could sit in. Yeah. And that was, uh, that, it, it was like in New York in the village in the old days. Is yes. that you could, that there would be 10, 12 clubs. Mm -hmm. that you, could, you could wander from club to club. You had some great, you know, like Black Hawk and things like that. Yeah. We're down there. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. You're watching Jazz Tonight with our friend Polo West. Uh, uh, a big thank you to the folks at the Prune Yard Cinemas who are, are kind enough to sponsor uh, Jazz Tonight. Uh, Cinemas is a marvelous, marvelous venue with... Uh, it's, it's the South Bay's only dine-in theater where you can have a drink at your seats as you're, as you're watching the movie. And uh, if it's a bad movie, drink all the more, so it's perfect. <laughs> and, and the Cedar Room, which is a marvelous uh, bar with craft cocktails. We'll tell you a little more about it. We'll show you around and be right back with Jazz tonight. Hello, and welcome to Prune Yard Cinemas, Silicon Valley's most unique movie-going experience and the South Bay's only service to your seat, Luxury Theatre. Since this concept is probably new to many of you, let me take a moment to help you make the most of your visit. At the Prune Yard, the show starts long before the film begins. From our media wall in our lobby, keeping you up to date on happenings here at the theatre, to our concessions area, which is, well, pretty special. Oh, you had dinner and cocktails in mind? Well, you came to the right place. Our chef-driven kitchen and cedar room offers seasonal bites which pair perfectly with our craft cocktails, draft beers, and local wines, and are all available at the bar and at your seat. It's really quite simple. If you'd like something from concession, something from the kitchen, or from the bar, just press the call button to your right, and one of our servers will be with you in no time. So that's it, just place your order. Thank you. They will be back with your check long before that critical scene in the movie. Our goal is to not disrupt you or your neighbor's experience. So, just put up your feet and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Jazz Tonight. Michael Jacoby with you with our Jazz on the Plaza resident artist, Paula West, who is performing this evening, which means nothing to you because you're seeing this a month later and you probably, hopefully, saw the show and you're saying, boy, that was a great show. Or you're saying and trying to kick yourself and saying, why didn't I see that show? <laughs> but either way, we're delighted you're with us today. Um, I was thinking about how much, do you do your own arrangements? I might have some input okay. on it, but it's usually a, a pianist that I work with. But Adam's here, Adam Schulman's here right, tonight, and right. he's done some things, and a Bruce Barth. So, you know... You worked with who, uh, a gentleman, a good friend of yours who passed away. George Mester George, Yes, yeah. George, a marvelous arrangement. Yes, yeah. You know, and that's his arrangement of Bewitched tonight. Okay. Well, you know, I think about, for instance, somebody in the case, because I, I, you know, I, I know the Sinatra's catalog so well, but somebody had to figure out, and it was Riddle with this case, I think, but the way you look tonight, if you hear it on Broadway, it's this ballad, and it's just... I mean, the, the creativity of saying, you know, if we pump this up, this really would be a great tune. Yeah. yeah there's right. a it lot, was a great uh, tune uh, anyway. A lot of those on Broadway yeah. are, are totally... Are nothing like you expected. Yeah. Yeah. They would never, yeah. they would never do that. Well, that begs the question, and, I, and, and, and when, I, when I talk about you with folks, it, it, I point out um, that, that you are fearless and well, that you, you will... Um, I, I mean, you've done Subterranean Homesick Blues. Right? Yes. Now, how do you, which is, of course, the Bob Dylan tune, mm -hmm. you hear that, and how do you, I mean, do you say to yourself, oh, this would work as a jazz well, tune? and it doesn't necessarily have to be a jazz tune. Or so even to, to speak, work in a little just, different just, arrangement. Just, yeah. I, you know, I feel like, I think I've said this to you before, he's, his music has been around, it's not going anywhere, yeah. and it's a, it's, the songbook has a, expanded now yeah to uh to different people yeah. so you know you just i you know i think good songs what did uh 
I think it was Louis Armstrong who said, there are no corny songs, only corny singers. Yeah, good point, good point. And so, you know, if something's good, it, you, can, you can do it. Well, and, and Dylan, though, I mean, you listen to Like a Rolling Stone by Dylan, and you listen to Like a Rolling Stone by you, and his is, is, is a little bit more hard-edged, hard I think, and yours is more bittersweet, but it's, it's a beautiful tune. It is a beautiful But nobody, tune. I shouldn't say nobody, but so few people, you know, well, I do Rogers and Hart. They do, oh, <laughs> you know, I oh. mean, that's really neat. Yeah. yeah. And you have to try to, uh, you have to try to make the song your own. Yeah. So you don't sound like you're right. singing it at a wedding or something. Yeah. You know, you have to, not Dil that there's anything wrong with that. No. Dylan had one of the great love songs called I Threw It All Away, which you should record. I mean, it's a perfect tune. I had it. In the palm a of my hand. Lot yeah. of songs like yeah. that. Yeah, he, he does. Talks. And you've um, you've also done uh, "Don't Think Twice." Yes, yeah. I've done. Well, you know, I did a whole Dylan yeah. show. Yeah. Which I'm going to do again Good. with SF performances next year. Well, we were yeah, we were talking about the fact that uh, when you first got to San Francisco, there were all these great clubs you could sit in. Um, it must be you must uh, uh, count your blessings every day for San Francisco jazz. Yes. Yeah. You mean the SF Jazz Center? SF Jazz. Or, oh, yeah. I think well, I mean, we all the, are grateful the for that. Such a that that place. happened. Yeah. Yeah. You and know? they should count their blessings for you. Oh, because thank you. you are a regular there. Thank you. It's a lovely space yeah. and great. Well, sound. and what's nice, and uh, uh, you know, I've seen you there a couple of times, and you know, it, it's nice because you have the option of doing a multimedia show, which you did for was it was it called American yeah, Protest was, uh, Music? Politics and protest, yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which was just a, a terrific, terrific program. It reminded me who is, um, and we've had her here. Like, oh, Pamela Rose, who did the thing on the uh, women, the, the women uh -huh. jazz, and yeah. great women writers. Mm -hmm. um, so you, when you're going back, uh, what, what have you got coming up? You going back to uh, SF? I'm gonna do the San Jose. Oh, are you doing festival? Good. I've never done it before. Okay. It was and, Bruce, Bruce is putting that together. Yeah, everybody. and then uh, in January at the Herbst Theater, I'll do the uh, Bob Dylan show. Yeah. Okay. Which will be. You know, nice. we were talking uh, earlier about Sasha. You guys kind of reflect uh, your performing styles in terms of your venues. You both do New York, and you both do Paris. Um, I haven't done Paris oh, you in haven't? a long time. Oh, you haven't? Okay. Yeah. She does Paris a lot. Yeah. But you do, yeah. you still do New, New, New York? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, last time was at Dizzy's at Jazz yeah. Lincoln Center was and the last then, time. Which and I've is, done Mesro. Which and, is the venue that I love? Is it the Appel Room? Uh, oh. No, I did the Dizzy's. But the one where I saw you was Michael. Oh, that's the Appel Room. Appel Room, yeah. which is, Isn't if it, you get to New York at Lincoln Center, this is the one that overlooks Columbus Circle. Yeah, and it's beautiful. And so does Dizzy's, too. Dizzy, yeah, it does, yeah. but it's not pointed that yeah. direction. Yeah, yeah. So where else do you play? You played, didn't you used to play uh, the Algonquin? Yeah. Yeah, which, yeah, uh, yeah I, I saw that. you that. Strange little room. It was this room yeah. that was, uh, really it was long. like a hallway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was this long hallway with a piano in the yeah, middle. Yeah, so um, you're like, the person is either in your face. <laughs> yeah, or they're literally. In, yeah, are there like Siberia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you talk is, about the Bob Dylan thing. What else, uh, what, what in the back of your mind, what's on your bucket list? On my bucket list. Well, I want to do another show at SF Jazz. I'm, the next thing I'm doing actually is a, a women in f feminism with uh, uh, Tiffany Austin and Kim Nally oh. and I, and of course the person and Marcus Shelby's doing the arrangement and stuff. But it is with Angela Davis. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know when when you mention names like Tiffany uh, and Kim, it it just it. It reassures me that I'm doing something right because they have been here and uh, and they're you know. And I last saw her at Kumba. Yeah, Tiffany uh, last is month. Just, just terrific. Yeah, she's and, uh, doing well. And well, I guess Kim is uh, is doing Feinstein's. Yes, with, uh, uh, no, with, um, a week or two. With yeah. uh, yeah, with uh, Houston person. Houston. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, used to. Uh, I keep going back to New York clubs. Did you ever play the Rainbow Room in there? No, no. no. Where was you? We talked about this before. We got time. Um, you were in uh, Robin Williams' film, 
bicentennial band. Right. And there was a scene where there was a big band, uh -huh. and you were in front of a, uh -huh. it was a symphony, Brackley, wasn't it? It was, it, yeah. It, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, that was that. Wait, that was did filmed you do that at on City a Hall. Stage? Oh, you didn't that was see? filmed at City Hall. Okay. Well, first you have to, as with everybody, I think just about it's not live. Yeah. Because first you do the re recording and everything with the orchestra, and then you do the filming because they're trying to save time, and you just have to make sure you're mouthing the words yeah. properly. Yeah. yeah, that was something, and that was like at four in the morning. Really. And they had, because I'm, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not the tallest person. And they had these <laughs> shoes that were like this. And I want to fall. I said, if I fall asleep, I'm going to die. Yeah. Because, <laughs> but it was a nice memory. Yeah. Have you seen the new Robin Williams documentary? The one inside my mind? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen half of it. I'm in the process good. of watching. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, his, uh, uh, who, I guess, he, I didn't realize he had lived with Elaine Bouger for a while. And uh, she's funny. She's, yes. Robin, I know you're fooling around. It's okay. Oh, no. <laughs> he says, yes. But, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, Great well, it, it's, it's interesting that, that and this is classic flow of consciousness on this show, but it's interesting watching that because I was a huge Jonathan Winters fan. I, yeah. And you totally I mean, see the influence. Oh, oh, absolutely. And I remember in the 80s, maybe the late 70s, this was in Cupertino. I was judging a comedy competition. Mm. Robin was one of the guys, and he didn't win. <laughs> what? Do you remember who won? I, 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 I might have been Bobcat. Might have been there because of the Bobcat. Uh, 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 yeah, Bob, Bobcat. Yeah, Bobcat. Way, golf. Uh, yeah, yeah, gold. Whatever. Gold something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <gasps> yeah. It was. It was. Oh my of those days. goodness! It was so funny. Uh, okay, who else would you do? We got a couple of minutes. Uh, you got Dylan. It, it, oh, who else I'm, like to I'm do a kind of. To? I was thinking of doing a theme of dance. That's interesting. Um, but it's not. It don't take it so literally. Yeah. But it could be like there's dance in the title, yeah. or I was thinking of doing that, or I like was dancing thinking, on the ceiling, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, I was thinking of doing um, British songwriters yeah. as another one. Our British artists. Have you done any? We were talking about Carol Coates off camera earlier. Have you I done did, any of this stuff? Well, yeah, on my first CD, I did yeah. You'll See. Oh, that's right, which is my one of my favorite tunes. Yeah. And he, of course, also did No One Ever Tells You, London mm -hmm. by Night, Music Is My Life. Yeah. So, quite extraordinary guy. It was nice to see yes. uh, all of you there that night. Um, for, do you, have you got a website yet? No, you don't. Are you working mm -hmm. on it? Yeah. I guess people want to buy, that. seriously, people yeah. want to buy your product. Yeah. I need so to get some new product. Swing though. by the house. It's time or to get what? some. Ah, ah, I got my little coin uh, uh, thing here. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> no I, I mean, you know, they're always, but they are available on Apple and all of oh, that. Oh, so you can. iTunes and okay. stuff. Yes. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would be remiss, and, uh, and I know you don't get fed up hearing it, but not to uh, ask how Satchmo is doing. Satchmo's <laughs> great. He's cooling off right now because it's Satchmo it's too hot right now. Is Paula's French bulldog, who is uh, an iconic uh, member of the jazz community, and uh, and as I uh, I remember when Paula first told me that Satchmo, who this big, was He's uh, a little uh, bigger uh, now. Well, a little bigger now. He was a service dog. And I said, what does he do? Open the bottom drawer of the dresser? Is that his job? No. Said, no, he's a service dog. No, he's... And he's a he, sweetheart. He is a sweetheart. And he's, he's, he's on the phone to room service right now. Uh, if he could, if he could. He would. Yes, he would in a minute. yes. I know he's not like a... He's never going to be a guard dog or yeah. something because if someone came in and he could see, he said, vodka's in the it. fridge, yeah. help yourself. <laughs> you know, he's... <laughs> he yeah. would just... That's, yeah. He's adult, but he'll be he'll be there tonight. Yeah. Uh, I am not given to hyperbole. However, uh, this lady here is uh, is my favorite singer on the planet, and I, I mean sincerely I, I, that if so we sweet. were in the fifties, uh -huh. uh, the one the single names would be uh, would, would be Ella, Sarah, Carbon, and Paul. Oh, well. I'm proud to have you. Oh, thank you, my thank dear. you. Always a thank joy you. to see you. Before we go, I want to thank the folks at Taylor Made Golf who cleverly put their logo behind me that I'm sitting on. So, but I wanted to, they were kind enough to donate for the show these director seats, and uh, uh, I uh, play Taylor Made drivers now. I uh, ride in their seats, so I appreciate that as well. Anyway, that's jazz tonight. We sure appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, I'm Jacoby. I'll see you soon. Thank you.